So I've recently started a project of tying a bunch of flies for a steelhead trip that I've got planned in September. It's a guided trip, so I requested a list of flies. And uh, one of the first flies that I came across was a fly called the fly du jour. And apparently it's been a pretty successful pattern that um, people use. Unfortunately, one of the prime materials that it utilizes, um, a material called the pink edge bright, actually isn't available anymore. So um, apparently you can get any other color that you want except for the pink and this is supposed to be a magical fly so I've been working on a couple of different solutions and I think I've come up with one that uh, is a pretty realistic reproduction of the the fluorescent pink butt that goes on this fly. So I'm going to utilize a couple of different techniques here because not only on this fly, um, when you put floss on a fly and it gets wet, so brightly colored floss over the, the top of a black hook, um, looks great when it's dry. As soon as it gets wet, it typically um, turns, turns dark and, and might not be quite as effective. So the whole idea of this fly is to create a hot spot on the back of the fly. Um, I've also become a kind of a fan of using this, um, this uh, hollow tinsel um, from UTC. For doing ribs and, and things like that and doing tags on my flies. So basically what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go right back to the, um, the hook point and I'm just going to run my, my uh, UTC hollow back and then I'm going to apply some pretty good tension here and I'm just going to wrap that forward like I normally would and just create a little tiny bit of a tag. I just like the color and it seems to work well. I'm going to go back to my thread here. I'm actually going to back it off. One trick in steelhead flies is take as few wraps as you can until you're in a spot where you know you can take a bunch of wraps. So then I'm just going to wrap that off. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some bright pink floss um, that I just got. So I've actually never tied with it before. And I probably even don't need both strands of this, but I'm just going to peel off a piece. You can put it in a bobbin holder. Makes your life easier if you use it quite a bit or you're tying a bunch of the same fly. And there's just a lot of floss on there, so I'm actually just going to peel a piece off. And then again, I'm going to just tie that in with one wrap. And I'm going to go back and just kind of lay that up in my material holder. And then I'm going to pull my hollow tinsel back, kind of lay it back there, and then I'm just going to wrap forward and, and get the, that tag kind of out of the way. You also don't want to create inconsistent body sizes, so if you're going to tie something in the back, tie some of it forward so it doesn't give you a big lump at the back of the body there. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do, and so this is, this is part of first part of the trick. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to leave that floss to the rear. I'm going to go back. I'm going to wrap all the way back to the back of that floss. And again, then I'm just going to move forward. This stuff's also super thin, which I like. So what this is going to do is going to create a shiny, holographic, bright um, underside to the to the floss and give it something to reflect reflect above over top of it. Back my thread off here and I'm going to tie that off. This is a pretty common Atlantic salmon fly trick so you're going to you can use just regular silver tinsel or gold tinsel but something to give it a background to sit on top of. And then very simply I'm just going to throw a whip finish in here just so I don't lose my work somewhere along the way. And again, I can spin the, the Norvice here. I just did one of these and I got it all the way done and I realized I had a piece of black thread showing through because I did this with a green butt skunk. So it's applicable to multiple colors. Um, and then now I've got my tag. I continue it forward just a little bit. I don't need a huge tag, but I'm doing this a little bit for illustration purposes. 
And I'm going to tie that off. So, a uh, normal steelhead fly right there, you could go ahead and put the rest of your body on and keep going. Um, but, again, this, this floss will darken when it gets wet, when it gets dirty, and when it gets drug around in your fly box forever. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use some clear cure goo in the, the fleck, because that's um, what I actually have, and I think the fleck could, could potentially add a little something. So I'm going to do the thicker again. I put it onto a, a white card, and then I pull it off of the bodkin. And I'm just going to slowly work that on. Love this stuff. So much nicer than epoxy. Could do it with epoxy. And I'm just going to work it over the body. I'm going to build a little glowy, um, clear hot spot on the back of this fly, which I think is pretty close representation of what I'm seeing in fly shops of, of uh, the fly du jour, which has got a pink butt, purple body. It's kind of a pink and, and purple version of a green butt skunk. And I actually just tied an exact copy of the fly in a green butt skunk and it looks good. I'll put that up with this. So I'm just creating that clear bubble. There's some flex in there. Don't need a ton of this stuff. And it's going to be a good durable fly too. And again, when I clean my bodkin off of this stuff, I just punch it through my cardboard. I'm going to get, get my um, clear cure goo out of the way so it doesn't, so it doesn't set up with the light. Because I'll have that card on my desk for a week and it won't be a problem. And as you'll see, this thing really glows under fluorescent light. So I'm just going to spin it, make sure I've got a good even coat. And a lot of the thicker goos um, are kind of tacky when they're when they're um, set. So I like to go over with Clear Cure Goo Hydro. And again, just the minimal, just the tiniest amount. We don't need a big glass bead at the rear of this, but it's kind of the effect that we get. And that'll give it a nice hard body. And it'll be a great protector, and it, it will never lose that color. It'll just be bright, bright fluorescent pink on the rear of that body. Again, I'm going to go over with my bodkin. Really, more than anything, I'm pulling material off at this point, then really spreading it around. Just making sure that I've got just enough on there. Spin it around a little bit just to make sure that it's set. And then I will hit it with the light. Again, you just watch that thing really bright, really bright. So that's the back of the fly. I'll put some completed flies up um, as examples, but uh, I think it's a great way to create a, a really bright hot spot, even though um, the original material isn't available. Let me know what you think.